Rice Checks and Wheat Checks, the bite-sized cereals in the red and white checkerboard packages present Space Patrol! <laughs> High adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space. Visions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of the Space Patrol! In today's transcribed Space Patrol adventure, Buzz and Happy, exploring a wooded section of Mars, have just seen two men in strange, primitive masks holding a girl as captive. As the two Space Patrollers move to rescue her, Happy falls into a pit covered with branches and leaves. You give me a hand, I'll pull you out. Yes, sir. Quite reach it. I'll lie down on the edge of the pit. There. Now that's fine, sir. Not now I can... Commander, look out. What's the matter? Look behind you. There's a man in a mask. And he's got a spear at your back. We'll return in just a moment with today's exciting Space Patrol adventure. The Mystery of the Masked Martians. <laughs> Do you hear those rum Space Patrollers? They're coming from an ancient city on Mars, and they're sending you a special message from Commander Corey about the brand new super scary, super spooky looking surprise Commander Corey has for you. The Man from Mars Totem Head with Magic Forehead Vision. Now, in just a few moments, you'll find out how you can get one. And wait till you see it, gang. Wow! This weird totem head is more than 12 inches high. Fits over your head, rests on your shoulders, makes a complete disguise because that magic forehead vision plate lets you see out, but nobody else can see in. It's got a sinister-looking face in the front, a spooky-looking face in the back, ears that flop, a swell beak-like nose, and fang-like teeth. Put on your totem head, and your pals won't know whether you're coming or going. They won't know who you are either, because with a magic forehead vision, you can see them, but they cannot see you. It's like having an extra pair of X-ray eyes. Now, gang, here's all you do to get your very own Man from Mars totem head. Just send a rice checks or a wheat checks box top, together with your name and address, and 25 cents in coin to Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. Don't forget your 25 cents. That's Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. <laughs> And now, today's Space Patrol adventure, The Mystery of the Masked Martians. At regular intervals, giant towers rise up from the Martian desert, ready to relay power along the equator to a city far beyond the horizon. Around an uncompleted tower is a cluster of temporary buildings and stacks of supplies. In the office of Ed Hicks, superintendent of construction, Buzz and Happy look on as Hicks points to a map in this section of Mars. We got all these towers up without a bit of trouble, Buzz. But from the minute we set up camp at this site, things have happened. What kind of things? Well, I suppose you could sum it up as sabotage. Supplies disappeared, and food mostly. Mess hall burned down three nights ago. We've had accidents. Accidents? Anyone hurt? No, not seriously, but it slowed down our work considerably. Men have reached a point where they, well, they don't trust each other. Uh-oh. On a job like this, that's bad. Yeah, you're right, but still there's nothing tangible to go on outside of these accidents. And they might be due to the men's nervousness. Yeah, nothing tangible. Except that one of my men is missing. Oh? One of the foremen, Turk Fowler. New man, he wasn't well liked. Could your men have ganged up on him? In the present state of mind, possibly. One of our scout tanks is missing, too. Then this man Fowler may have run off. Yeah. But anyone with any sense would have headed west toward the nearest settlement. Tracks leading from the camp indicate the scout tank headed east. East? Nothing in that direction for hundreds of miles, except for a wooded section about 30 miles away. I don't know. As far as you know, then, there have been no strangers looking around the camp. No. No strangers at all, except for the girl. What girl? I don't know her name. She drove into camp yesterday in a surface car. Wanted to buy some food. Seems to be on short of supplies. What was the girl doing out here? I don't know. I didn't see her myself. From what my assistant said, she was doing some exploring over to the east. Could there be any connection between this girl and the mysterious events in the camp? Or the disappearance of Fowler? I don't see how. Frankly, I can't see a sensible explanation for anything. Fowler may have left because he was afraid of the men or afraid of what's going on here. Still, he seems to have headed in the direction the girl did, toward the east. Well, if the men won't talk to you, I doubt that I could get anything out of them. Right now, at least. 
I'm worried about Fowler. If he's been in that mysterious ship at the camp, I'd have sent somebody to look for him. If Fowler doesn't want to be found, a search by air would give him a chance to hide, but another scout tank could follow his tracks across the wasteland. Have you got one available? Yeah, sure. I'll have one fueled up right away. Fine. Happy and I will try to find him. Mile after mile, Buzz and Happy follow the tracks of the stolen scout tank across the Martian desert. Then, across the almost level wasteland, they see a range of low hills covered with what on Mars is thick vegetation. As the spinning treads of their scout tank bring them closer to the hills, Happy turns to Buzz. Commander, this is all beginning to look familiar. Sure, Happy, we were here a few weeks ago to rescue that girl scientist. Oh, yeah. And that knoll up there, that's where the spaceship crashed 900 years ago. The wreck that was supposed to have a treasure aboard. Uh Uh-huh. Hey, Commander, look up ahead. There's a vehicle of some kind. That's not a scout tank. It's an ordinary circus car. It looked like it stalled in the sand. Must be equipped with special treads or couldn't maneuver on this terrain. Well, didn't Ed Hicks say the girl who came into camp was driving a circus car? Yes. We'll stop and have a look. There's no one in the car, sir. No one's in sight. The tracks of that scout tank continue right past the car. And on toward those wooded hills. Look at these footprints. They lead from the surface car to the tank tank. Well, then the girl got out of this car and into the tank. And she must have gone willingly. There's no sign of a struggle. Let's take a look in the car. Let's see who this car is registered to. Uh oh. What is it, sir? Look what's lying in the back seat. A mask. Why, it's the same kind of mask we found weeks ago near the wrecked ship and, and gave to... Uh, oh, what was that girl scientist's name? Laura. Laura. It's the same mask. Well, now we know who the girl was that visited the construction camp. This car's registered to a vehicle renting company in Lowell City. And Miss Loring must have driven all the way from Lowell City, hundreds of miles across the desert all by herself. Well, apparently she's not alone now. Do you think she's in any danger from following? No, perhaps not. I don't know why he stole a scout tank and headed in this direction. Come on, Hal. Get back in the tank and follow these tracks. There's the tank, sir, right at the edge of the woods. Uh-huh, and over at the left is the wrecked spaceship. The Black Star. I don't see anybody up on the knoll. Maybe they're poking around inside the wreck. If that's where they were going. They wouldn't have parked the tank here over here. Probably exploring the woods, huh? Since Fowler may not be too delighted to see us under a ray gun. Cautiously, Buzz and Happy work their way deep into the woods, following a trail marked by broken twigs and an occasional footprint. They seem to have a definite idea of where they're going. Yes, sir. But who's doing the leading? Miss Lauren or Fowler? The girl, probably. Fowler may be holding a gun on her. And when we last saw her a few weeks ago, she was convinced that the people that crashed in that ship were space pirates and had hidden stolen jewels somewhere in this area. Oh, the jewels, but everything else. The wreck was completely stripped. And the last survivor of that wreck must have passed away eight centuries ago. Hey, maybe he left a map, and Miss Loring found it. Mm-hmm. There was one mystery about that wreck that Miss Loring couldn't explain. When the pirates crashed, the space phone for help. According to the ancient records, there were 20 men and women aboard the Black Star. Eighteen survived the crash. Yes, sir. And help never arrived. Those graves up on the hill near the wreck, who's that? And that's the mystery. Remember, there are 20 graves. Who buried the last survivor? Hey, that is a mystery. Of course, the simple explanation is the wreck of the wrong that there were 21 people aboard. And Miss Loring may have all the facts now, Commander. It'll make quite a story. Those pirates landing with a ship full of stolen museum relics from Earth. Yes, and the choice they had to make. Between living out their lives here on Mars or calling for rescue and going back to Earth as criminals. Yeah, there could have been a battle between those who wanted to stay and those who wanted oh, wait, to go. Huh? Okay. I heard something like that. There's a movement in that bush. Maybe it was the hand of the sky. Smoke and rockets, what was that? I think that tree right behind us. Commander, it's an arrow. Listen. Whoever shot it was running away. Well, why would Fowler be using a primitive weapon like a bow and arrow? <laughs> The girl. Final Loring. She's in trouble. Come on, Hap. Coming to appear. Come on. Look. Am I losing my mind? I don't know. 
behind him. Yes, just like the one we found. The big teeth, the bulging eyes, and the feathers. I thought I'd guessed. The skin was like pin. They're carrying bows and arrows. I hadn't seen us. They're resting. They start to shoot me. What about Miss Lauren? I'll take her unconscious. I can't go back to the car. The important thing is to get her away from those men. Just what I can't be doing. Hey! Happy! Hey! Happy, you hurt? No, sir. I didn't see this hole. It was covered up with branches and leaves. Now give me a hand. I'll pull you out. Yes, sir. I can't quite reach it. I'll lie down on the edge of the pit. There. That's fine, sir. Now I can... Commander, look out. What's the matter? Look behind you. There's a man in a mask. And he's got a spear at your back. We'll return to Space Patrol in just a moment. Weird. Fantastic. The man from Mars, totem head. Magic forehead vision. And you can have one, Space Patrollers. In a second, you'll find out how. And when you put on your own totem head, you'll look just like a real space spook. Even your best pal won't know you. It's more than 12 inches high, and from head to shoulders, your identity is a complete secret. That magic forehead vision lets you see out, but your friends can't see in or tell who's wearing the man from Mars totem head. Think of the fun you can have fooling them. They won't know which direction you're headed either because the totem head has a face in the front and one in the back, too. It comes in real Martian colors, red and yellow, green and black, with floppy ears, a beak-like nose, and fang-like teeth. Now remember, the magic forehead vision, that's X-ray vision. You can see out, but nobody can see in. Gang, to get your man from Mars totem head, do this. Just send a rice checks or wheat checks box top together with your name and address and 25 cents in coin to Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. Don't forget your 25 cents. That's Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. This offer good only in the USA and may be withdrawn at any time. And now back to our Space Patrol adventure, The Mystery of the Masked Martian. Buzz and Happy have trailed a stolen scout tank across the Martian desert to a wooded area. In a clearing deep in the woods, they saw Fana Loring, a girl scientist, struggling in the grasp of two strange figures wearing weird, primitive masks. As the space patrollers rushed to a rescue, Happy toppled into a pit covered with branches. As Buzz stretched himself prone on the ground at the edge of the pit to assist Happy, another masked figure appeared. Right now, Happy is looking up from the pit, horrified as the man in the grotesque mask holds the point of a spear against the commander's back. Don't move, sir. He looks like he's ready to jab you. If you've got your ray gun, give him a blast. It flew out of my hand when I fell. I can get mine out of my holster without making it suspicious. Oh! Man, did he hurt you? No, that's just a warning. He evidently knew I was reaching for a weapon. He's taking your gun. For a savage, this one's smart. He doesn't know how to use my ray gun. He's making sure I won't use it. He's not a leak for this trip. Help him! Get that man out of pit! Come here, he talks English. You must know everything you've said. Hurry! All right. Give me your hand, Happy. Yes, sir. Up you go. There. You stay right there. Do not move, or I will use my spear. We won't move. Who are you? I am Borg. Captain Borg. Stay where you are. I will kick your weapons into the pit. I don't get this, sir. These people wear those masks and use bow and arrows and spears, and yet they can speak English. And this one calls himself Captain. I could have finished disposing of that spear, but he didn't. I could rush him now, sir. It wouldn't help Donna Loring, even if we overpowered him. Huh? There go our guns into the pit. Go. That way. Across the clearing. All right, Borg. The Captain Borg, but where are you taking us? To the village of my people. You shot an arrow at us a while ago. Your men are holding a girl. She's a friend of ours. Now you're threatening us with your spear. Why? We haven't harmed you. That is a lie. The other man drew his weapon. It made big sounds. And two of my men fell to the ground. The other man? That must be Fowler. Borg, listen. Those men that fell, there were no wounds on them, were there? No. But they do not move. They're merely asleep. They'll wake up and be all right again. Let us take the girl and the other man and we'll go away. No. You are not of the great ones. You do not wear masks. Therefore, you are evil. Great ones? Who are the great ones? We will not talk here. Go. 
I will follow you with my spear at your backs. You better humor him, Happy. I think Captain Borg will listen to reason eventually. With the masked Martian walking behind them with Ray's spear, Buzz and Happy make their way through the woods. At last, they come to a clearing containing a few rude huts. In the face of a cliff are the openings of several caves. As Buzz and Happy are marched through the tiny village, they're aware of faces peering at them through the doorways of the huts. Captain Borg pods them toward a cave guarded by a huge man, also wearing one of the strange masks and holding a spear. The guard stands as though he were made of stone, except for a stiff salute to Borg with his long spear. Get in the cave. I will come for you when my crew has decided your fate. Do not attempt to escape. All right, Captain Borg, but there are a couple of facts you ought to know. Get in the cave! Okay. Come on, Happy. Yes, sir. Hey, the girl's in the cave. Mander. You all right, Miss Lloyd? As well as can be expected. What about Fowler? Is he here, too? He was asleep in the back of the cave. He was hit by an arrow after he used his ray gun and brought him in. Did you hurt that? It's just a flesh wound in the shoulder. But we should get him to a doctor before it becomes infected. Oh, I'm very glad to That isn't going to be easy. Hey, Miss Loring, who are these people? Do you know? Yes, but the truth is so fantastic, you won't believe it. They're descendants of the people who cracked up in the Black Star. Isn't that right? Yes, Commander. The most amazing example of survival I've ever heard of. A ship crashed here 870 years ago. That means this is about the 25th generation. Oh, but those graves on the hill, there are exactly 20. Why aren't there more? That hill is regarded as sacred ground. It's reserved for the great ones. The great ones? Oh, that's the phrase Borg used. Yes, these people believe that their remote ancestors were superior beings who came out of the sky. Hmm. They came out of the sky, all right, but they sure weren't superior. They were pirates. Remember, Happy, in 800 years, facts can become distorted into legends. Yes, but didn't they have any books on the ship? Oh, in the struggle for survival, reading probably became a lost art in two or three generations. Yes, that's have taken all of their efforts to obtain food. Reading wasn't a practical skill. But those crazy masks, they weren't practical either. No, but they symbolized the great masks. Those masks are copies of those that were aboard the spaceship. Relics of primitive tribes that lived there about thousands of years ago. Yet they're not quite like the old masks, Miss Mary. No. After all, these people are intelligent and creative. Each generation probably added its own ideas and designs. Yeah, but you'd think they'd know that people who fly in spaceships don't wear primitive masks. Yes. The first few generations probably realized it, but for hundreds of years, everything these people know has been passed on by word of mouth for 30 generations. Yeah, I noticed that Borg calls himself captain and refers to his people as his crew. Yes, those terms are carryovers from the original survivors of the spaceship crew. Each new leader of this colony becomes a captain of the crew. Hmm. Sounds funny at first, but I guess it makes sense. How many people are there in this group now, Miss Lane? Not more than 60. Hey, that's quite a mob. When they've got bows and arrows, and we haven't got any weapons at all. It's ironic, isn't it? Those primitive weapons, those museum rocks, hadn't been aboard that spaceship. These people couldn't have survived. That's right. Chances are the ammunition for the modern weapons was exhausted in a few years. Well, right now I wish the spears and bows and arrows were exhausted. How are we going to get out of this fix? The chief weapon now is to know how these people think and what they feel. Exactly. Now, if we can convince him... It's It's Borg. Well, Captain Borg, what's the verdict? Verdict? I do not understand. But no matter. I have met with my crew. We have agreed that you will not leave our woods alive. You're going to keep us here. It is nearly night. Deimos, the large moon, is already climbing across the sky. When he is overtaken by his swift little brother Phobos, I will come for you. The best marksman of my crew will aim their arrows so that you will not suffer. Oh, that's great. Thanks a million. The great one will be avenged. Until I return, goodbye. Well... I've been in some tough spots, but this is a nightmare. He calls the moons of Mars by their right names, and yet he's going to finish us off with bows and arrows, like some primitive savage. What are we going to do? Another half hour will be dark. It'll give us about an hour before Phobos passes the other moon. How's that shoulder, Father? It's pretty sore. Otherwise, I feel okay. All right, now listen. The worst I know about you right now is that you stole a scout tank from the construction camp. I can explain that. I had to get away. The men were blaming me for that sabotage. But I didn't have a... Never mind that. 
We're going to get out of here. We've got to act now. With that bad shoulder, you aren't going to be much help in a fight, so Happy and I will jump the guard outside the cave. You two be ready to run when Happy and I tackle you. Don't worry. He was standing out there, holding his spear. Let's go. You never know what hit him. Come on. Paula, Paula, let's get out of here. Bonfire's burning. What a weird sight. The whole village is out. All I know is now. Pack of bloodthirsty savages. Wait. Stand still a minute. With those bonfires and the light from those two moons, we're going to have a tough time getting away from here without being seen. Commander, look. A couple of them are coming this way. Oh, I don't think so. Not yet. Let's run for it. No, Father. We wouldn't stand a chance. Up ahead of the yard, there's another cave. We'll duck in there until it's clear. Come on. We aren't any better off now than we were before. Yeah? We haven't got a guard standing over us. And Borg's crew doesn't know we've escaped yet. Just let the commander hang out. Papa, turn off that light. Ah, take it easy, commander. My back's to the cave opening. It won't show from outside. One flash of that Atomo light and we'd have a whole village in here on our necks. Hey, look back there in the cave. Looks like a museum. Papa, shield that light with your hand. Happy you and Connor stand close to Hank Papa to block any stray beam. Yes, sir. Wow, look at all this stuff. Masks, bows and arrows, spacesuits and tools. And drums. Primitive drums. This one is African. And this is, this is the Southeastern Asia. Corneo, perhaps. Never and mind the drums. Look at that. Wow. A whole chest full of gems. Diamonds, rubies, emeralds. This one is worth at least a million credits. Commander, this cave is, it is sort of a shrine to these people. They are the relics from their ancestor ship. Preserved for centuries. Interesting, isn't it? Space suits of the 22nd century next to prehistoric weapons. It's all the same to these people. Follow, leave those jewels alone. Now oh, let's take what we can. What good are they to these savages? Put them back. We aren't going to steal the treasures. Commander, are you nuts? This was pirate loot to begin with. Did their ancestors steal it? We haven't got time to argue about ethics and honesty. Do you want to walk out of this cave or do I kill you? Well, okay. We could all be rich. I'm more interested in getting away from here alive. Commander, can I see if it's all clear outside the cave? I wait, Happy. These masks. If we each put on a mask, we might be able to work our way around the edge of the village without being challenged. Oh, you are nuts. What about our clothes? It's a chance we'll have to take. Unless someone gets very close, our clothing will merge with the darkness. It's worth a try. Sure, even if they know we've escaped, they'd never suspect us of wearing these masks. Come on. Take a mask and let's get out of here. A moment later, four masked figures emerge from the dark cave and stroll casually along the perimeter of the village. At times, they pass within a few yards of the villagers, and the weird masks seem to change expression in the flickering glare of the bonfire. Buzz, Happy, and their two companions at last reach the darkness of the woods. Only then does Buzz permit them to remove their strange disguises. All right, we're safe now. Yeah, we can find the scout tanks. We can use Phobos up there as a guide. Thanks are almost due west of here. I don't hear any excitement back at the village. I guess they don't know we've escaped yet. Maybe a few minutes. Let's get as deep into the woods as we can before that mob comes after us. Commander, what's going to happen to those people back there? If I were you, I'd order a space patrol squadron to wipe them out with blast guns. Oh, what a dreadful thought. Somehow, you've got to convince these people that we aren't enemies. It'll take time and patience and understanding, but eventually they can learn to live in our modern society. With the two moons of Mars racing across the sky over them, Buzz and his party at last reach the edge of the woods and stand beside one of the scout tanks. Now let's get into the tank. It's a long trip back to the construction Just tank. a minute. You three are staying here. Hey, what? Commander, he's got a gun. Yeah, and it's a blaster. I'm going to put your tank out of commission, Commander, and then I'm heading for Lowell City. Where did you get that weapon from? Back in the cave while you were picking out your masks. Now I've also got a handful of those jewels. Don't be a fool. You can't get away with this. I was going to stop him. Ever think it over? This is a very stupid move. Oh, it is, huh? I've known for weeks that Miss Loring was planning this little one-girl expedition, and I knew if there was a treasure here, I'd make her lead me to it. Commander, I never saw this man until he came out during that stuff. Yeah, that's right. But I know your plans, Miss Loring. I got a job with the tower construction outfit to put me near the treasure. And the sabotage. You engineered that to delay the construction on that particular tower until Miss Loring showed up. Exactly. 
And her visit to the camp saved me a couple of scouting trips. Now just stand back, all of you. I'll make sure you can't use this tank to follow. Give me that gun, Fowler. Corey, I warned you. <clears throat> well, I'd have to get him to his feet. Amanda, you had that gun pointed right at you. Why, why did you pull it? He you? did pull the trigger. Oh, and you took that chance? Well, it wasn't much of a chance. Fowler found that gun in the cave, right? Oh, then you figured it wouldn't fire because it was so old. No, half old weapons are often as deadly as new ones. I couldn't know about the gun, but I do know of human nature. But, sir, what's human nature got to do with the gun not firing? Human beings don't use spears and bows and arrows if there's a more powerful weapon available. I could be almost certain that gun had fired its last shot centuries ago. Okay, Hap, let's get Fowler into the tank. We've got a long trip ahead of us. In just a moment, a preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol adventure brought to you by Nestle's Quick for the greatest tasting chocolate milk and those famous Nestle's chocolate bars. How do you do, Captain Two Fells? Hey, what in the... Who, who's that? Uh, it's me, Happy. I fooled you with this man from Mars totem head, didn't I? Well, you sure did, Hap. Why, you can't tell who's inside those spooky totem heads. That's magic forehead vision, space controllers. It lets you see out, but nobody can see in. You're completely disguised when you wear your totem head. Smoke and rockets, the totem head is fantastic. More than 12 inches high, all brightly colored with a scary totem face in front and another face in back, so your friends can't tell whether you're coming or going. <laughs> and remember, the magic vision forehead works only for you, so you can see out, but nobody can see in. Now here's how to get your very own totem head. Send the lid or a tracing of the front of the label of Nestle's Quick, together with your name and address and 25 cents, to Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. That's Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. And now, a preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol adventure. Buzz and Happy have entered a manufacturing plant on Jupiter to capture a fugitive. Now, in a large, empty storeroom, they find their search blocked by a locked door. He must be in the next room, sir. I heard a noise there. Get away from the oh, it looks pretty rugged. But... What happened to the lights? The darkness will help us as much as seven. Listen. Yeah. How did we get in? Yeah, I think we had a call of them. There are two of them here. They've got ray guns. Fire toward those sounds. We've got to hit them before they hit us. Be sure to join us next week for the thrilling story, The Tattooed Atom. Space Patrol, created by Mike Moser, starring Ed Kemmerer as Commander Corey and Lynn Osborne as Cadet Happy, was written by Lou Houston, produced and directed by Larry Robertson, executive producer Mike Deborah. Other players were Virginia Hewitt, Norman Jolly, and Ken Mayer. Dick Tufel speaking. Now, don't forget to tune in next Saturday and every Saturday for exciting action on Space Patrol! <laughs> Space Patrol was brought to you today by Rice Checks and Wheat Checks, the bite-sized cereals in the red and white checkerboard packages. <laughs> Be sure to see another exciting Space Patrol program on your local ABC television station. Consult your newspaper for time and channel. This program is broadcast to our armed forces overseas through the worldwide facilities of the Army.